the Loader Wiki 3AD here. Um, for 30 years I've been passionately researching subjects regarding spirit and deception in the world. I, I'm born with a lot of attributes and I have done a lot of courses and um, I love to do this passionately. I'm a non-profit and I do this for compassion reasons because I believe that the major problem with the world is lack of knowledge. I also believe that a lot of people out there want knowledge but they don't know where to go. They're concerned about deception. And so that's what I offer. I have a YouTube channel that's been going for 13 years. I've never had a problem. I've designed my own system and gone are the days of conspiracy theorists. Now it's gone professional. It's through seeking. And so no information comes from ego or is plucked in the air or, or is concluded from the atmosphere. So at any time, if I make a statement, you can say to me, so tell me, Rick, how did you come to this conclusion? Then I have to present a very, very convincing argument. Okay? Everything is based on logic. And so I've decided to revisit the subject I went through many years ago, and it's, it's life after death, back to life again. Now, you've all heard of the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Well, up until 1950, Tibetan Lama Street is my master subject. Um, if you were a student and you were a clairvoyant, you had to undergo the ceremony of the little death, which was basically they put you in a coffin deep underground for three days until your body was starved of sensation and you, you left your body. And so of the many, 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 many civilizations we've had on the earth where cataclysms have wiped us out. It only takes a thousand years to wipe out New York City where there's nothing left. Well, we've mainly always taken from small villages our shaman. Um, I do not believe in religion. I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that no religion is, is real. Nothing is real. Anyway, we took our shaman with us as we um, grew as a society and when we made our way to cities the knowledge that we took with us about sh shamanism we would place the shamans and their knowledge in positions of, of medicine um, social politics um, social behavior and law l-o-r-e um, and um, law um, behavior and um, belief systems in looking after the earth, all that sort of thing, because when I first, my very first subject I did when I was 19 was clairvoyancy. And I wrote down five questions and I took a tape recorder to a clairvoyant. And I, I did it all. And a year later, I found another one through word of mouth and I did the same thing. And when I got home, I compared them. And I, because back then I was still, um, influenced by the, um, the cabal's influence on human beings to rid us of our intended tool, which is to respond with logic. And they have changed it through frequencies and subliminal messages to have us respond through emotional fear. So it scared the shit out of me. But in the end, logic told me there's no way these two people could have known each other. They were 85% accurate. There was no motivation for them to be deceptive. It was just statistically impossible. So I had to come to the conclusion that this was indeed real. And if it was real, then the shock I had was, I've got access to fucking truth. Then I started looking around at all the people that, around me in society and thought, why don't they all fucking know? Why isn't this, why doesn't everybody know this? And that was the beginning of my, my spiritual journey. And so what I've done is, for the people out there who want to know, what is death? And I'm so confident in what I'm going to do here, is if you know any clairvoyance, you can actually ask them their opinion afterwards. And I'm confident that I will get a good, um, a, a, a good um, feedback. 
Now, I've produced about seven or eight videos for you, all about the death process. And um, it's done in a way where each one of the um, videos, the information has come from an extremely diverse genre. The, the, the sources are so far apart from each other. And the, the whole concept is, in the end, you'll come to the conclusion through logic that this has to be paid attention to. Now back to the shamans. This civilization now we're in is probably the first time where we haven't taken our shamans with us to this point in our society. The organized religions about three and a half thousand years ago um, raped and tortured shaman for their secret knowledge. And um, that's why they hold on to it so jealously and only give out little bits of it. And um, for example, you, you guys all know what the Gospels are, don't you? They are um, descriptions of Jesus' spoken word by his disciples. Well, the recently found Dead Sea Skulls, they found three Gospels, Gospels according to Thomas, according to um, Judas, and according to Mary. And the Pope has deemed these forbidden. Now, when you listen to or read the, the Gospel according to Thomas, the first thing you will notice if you're intuitive is that this has not been corrupted by the poison of deception. And all the things that I've ever concluded are in there um, about the I am, about um, whatever it is, it should be accessible by all men everywhere throughout history. It never set right with me that those who didn't come across the Bible were to be punished. Because you've heard of the FBI doing um, personality profiles. Well, there's a saying, it says, if you wish to know the artist, study his work. And so I sat down and did a, pro a, a profile on God. It was very easy. There were common sense things like loving, um, thoughtful, intelligent, foresight, um, kind. And so when you come up with a, a, a basic personality, then you can use that personality and throw off questions on how it would respond. And so, um, so this time round, our society has not brought the, the, the knowledge with them. And so, unfortunately, not everyone, but a large percentage of people, when they pass over, because they're not drained, trained in the death process, a large percentage of people are stuck in um, purgatory because they just don't know. One of my great teachers, the famous Lobsang Rumpa, during my um, deep study of Tibetan lamastry, um, in an unbroken chain from master to student over 2,500 years, um, as I was deep, deep involved, um, I developed a love for these men. And somehow I must have attracted him to me because he was starting to turn up at various clairvoyant readings many years ago. In the beginning, I was in denial of it. I didn't feel worthy, but in the end, he came through. And um, all the things that he, he said about his experience going through the ceremony of the little death, if you aren't educated, this doesn't happen to everyone. Not everybody gets caught in this, this spider's web, but a lot of people do. A lot of people, the first thing they find when they die is suddenly there are three times as many people around them than there were as a minute ago. Supposing a sniper shot you in the head. Now, your soul body is an energy body, and it's like your hand. Your physical body is like a glove. When you take the glove off, the hand is now taking place. The glove is on the ground, okay? It's material. Um, this, is elect this is protons and electrons. And so um, there is no hell and there is no devil. But there is a place called the lower regions or the outer regions where men's minds, thought forms have gathered to... Have you ever heard of how they made the curses on, on the tomb, on the... Um, uh, the mummy's tomb, they used thought forms. They took um, electroplasm from volunteers who died to make up this 
this protecting thing. It wasn't a soul. It's called a thought form. And the other ones are called elementals. Then there's the ones that are just plain really evil, which are human souls stuck in their situation, or they want to be in their situation. But um, that's all there is to it. So when the Tibetans, up until 1950, would go through the ceremony of little death, they would pass through this region. And because they were trained that to fear is what they feed on, they just dismissed them. And these, these creatures, and horrific creatures grabbing at their silver cord, couldn't do anything to them. So they simply passed through the lower regions into the heavenly fields. Now, imagine if you were a superstitious people. So, for example, in Tibet, in the Patola, prior to 1950, the learned lamas were of a certain class, but the village people, they were very um, superstitious and ignorant. They thought that they were encountering all the people that they've done wrong to, and devils and demons and all this shit.